Um, Marty has also taught reception classes in government schools, preschool settings, he's worked as well as running transition to school programs. So he's a senior lecturer and a former program director for the Bachelor of Education at the University of South Australia. And I know I'm looking really forward to hearing from Marty today about his current work with Thrive by Five Dads Alliance. He's also a father of three. And please join with me in welcoming Dr. Martin Mills Bay to address the call. So, some figures for you. 
your notes from it. And I don't have to you know, talk about this too much. Um, the figures here say that about 97.6% of childcare workers, and that's the word, sorry, early childhood teachers, um, are women, which means if you do the maths like me, there's about 2.4% of the, the workforce. Huge, huge lack of men. If you switch over here, we'll just look at this poll. Um, Centre-based daycare, childcare, um, the figures are a little bit better, but that includes people like directors, people like chefs, people that are involved in a childcare. So it's a little bit of a um, skewed figure, it's probably less than that. Anyway. So, a huge issue. Um, we've seen some great moves forward in women in STEM, where we've seen similar kinds of numbers in things like concrete and, and you know, trades, and a large amount of money there. And it's shifted a lot of that kind of workforce in that way, but not in this area. Why are there no men there? That's a great question, right? Um, I've got three answers to that question. Number one, there are in society some really established and entrenched rules or expectations about what men do. Uh, and the work of early childhood educators and working with our youngest children is generally seen as what we might call, I use inverted commas, women's work, right? Um, it's caring, it's nurturing, but it's also education. Um, so men are not seen as belonging in that space in general. Um, the wages and conditions for early childhood educators and teachers is pretty poor. Um, it's really hard to make a living, and a lot of early childhood educators are um, working really hard and doing other jobs trying to support their families while doing this important work. Um, as I said, women in STEM, there's a bit of a reversal here. So if we encourage more women into STEM-based um, subjects, which I know Gradery is really good at, working in that space, they generally see an increase in their wages. But for men going the other way, it's generally a decrease. The wages are not great. Um, that is kind of changing a little bit. Um, the third one that's not talked about very often is, is a high-risk proposition for men to work with young children. There is a perception that men are a danger, that men are seen as predators, and certainly those that are should be put in jail. But the majority of good men, high-quality men that work in this field, may get tarnished with that same brush. And I live in fear of those news articles where that does happen. Um, but for some men, just being seen in that space raises concerns for some parents, and those men often leave the, their jobs um, if they're not very well supported, um, and they find other things that are perhaps a little bit less risky for them. Okay, so um, there is a lot going on in Australia at the moment. There is this national workforce strategy in the early years, um, and you'll see on the, the graph on the right, since COVID, there's been this huge increase in the need for um, child care, as they call them in the in the data, but um, educators and teachers, um, the ads are continually going for more, more, more educators, and um, every school, every preschool, every childcare centre is always reaching out to have someone come and fill in because the teacher is unwell or has left the field. Um, so there was a big, broad need for more teachers, full stop. Um, and again, I say, 50 percent of the population, we are kind of ignoring them a little bit. Um, and how can we get more of those involved? Um, the National Workforce Strategy has a, um, an attraction and retention angle. So they're trying to do this, but they kind of barely mention men. They talk about diversity more broadly. Um, just the other day, this week, this came out, the Early Childhood Workforce Capacity Study, um, which found that um, we need more educators, 21,000 more educators across the country. I don't know where they're going to come from, um, but there is a certain need for them. And um, Professor Glover said, um, that the need is even higher in regional and rural and remote spaces um, and where communities are diverse, migrant communities, um, places where people you know, may not see uh, educators with the same kind of skin or that speak the same language as them. So there's some challenges there. Um, so diversity is really important. Cultural diversity, language diversity, but also gender diversity. Men and women working together. Um, again, that second point that I made about the pay is not great. Um, this will hopefully indicate to you how poor it is. Um, I've used the, the traffic light code here, right? So this is currently what childcare workers <coughs> make on average, $758 um, in weekly earnings. Compare that to teachers, early childhood teachers, and then the national average, national average wage. So they're nearly half the national average wage um, for working in childcare with um, a certificate free or diploma qualification. Highly qualified kind of people, um, lots of experience, lots of um, regulations around them, and they do great work, but the paying conditions are not great. 
federal government just committed 15 percent over two years to increase. Um, the council, sorry, not the council, the um, unions were aiming for at least 25 percent, like the um, aged care sector in the recent one. Um, but 15 percent is something, but it's not great. It's not going to hugely improve the lives of those educators and help them to survive, you know, the challenges in our society. Um, in here in South Australia, we had Julian Gillard chairing the South Australian Royal Commission for into Early Childhood Education and Care. Um, 43 recommendations came out of that, and the state government fantastically has agreed to um, support as many of those as possible in as many different ways as possible. Um, so that's a pretty good commitment, and there's a lot of money on the table at the moment. We've seen in the most recent budget, there's a lot of money in the area of early childhood education, which is great. Um, a focus in this area is much needed. Um, but out of that recommendation from the Royal Commission, again, think about the numbers here, in South Australia, they're going to need an additional 660 early childhood teachers and an additional 800 or more early childhood educators and then other allied people along the way. So there's thousands and thousands of jobs there, but no one to do them really at the moment. We're trying to increase this um, with people coming in. Um, perhaps we're missing something. Um, one note from the, the um, Royal Commission, the Gowry, which is a high quality centre here in South Australia, um, said that if we do things um, in a not a very high quality way, I was going to say half us, but you probably didn't want me to scream. Um, but if we don't do things well, then that is what we will stick with. So we need to make sure we're doing this well and doing it right, otherwise you get what you pay for, right? So we want high quality, we want some good money invested, and it needs to be used effectively. Okay, so this is just a round out of all the money that the state government's putting towards early childhood, which is a great sign, positive signs. It's the, the, the spring hope that's in the air that something might change here. Um, so 1.9 billion has been put towards this, this sector and this area, which is fantastic. Um, the bit that I've highlighted there is what the, um, the workforce part of it, which is the work of the uh, Office of Early Childhood Development, newly established, to try and increase the workforce in a whole range of ways. I'll just do some brief stuff about them. Um, so they have got a $56 million bucket that they're using to try and increase the number of early childhood educators in the field. They have a focus on diversity, which is good. Um, they are looking at retaining and attracting a diverse range of educators, but buried in there is the word men you'll find. Um, their focus is largely on cultural diversity, um, neurodiversity, or uh, you know, educators with a range of ways of seeing the world. Um, and yeah, I don't see much coming about men. Um, and look, I understand that. I understand that. Men do quite well in the world, correct? Um, so it's kind of a, a fraught space to be in, but again, 50% of the population here might be missing a, a huge opportunity um, at this time. Um, but they're doing good work and hopefully this will continue um, into the future. I don't know if time like that. Okay, so how I'm kind of working in this space and improving um, you know, the, the number of educators, the number of men in the early childhood education is I'm working with the Thrive by Five um, people at the Mindaroo Foundation. Um, Twiggy Forest kind of, you know, work, um, but working with a whole group of people to improve um, what happens for fathers more broadly, um, but also men early childhood alongside of that. So if you look up there, you'll see a number of endorsing agencies. I'm pretty excited about this one. Kim and I have kind of a Wiggles connection. Um, I don't know if you know, but the Wiggles were early childhood educators. Yeah. Well, three of them were. Um, three were, so the original OG Wiggles, the yellow, the red, and the blue were all studying early childhood education um, in New South Wales back in the day. They um, had a mate who was in a band called Cockroaches. Cockroaches, I'm about that earlier. Um, Jeff, um, who was not an early childhood educator, they said, you do some great stuff around music, we'd love to have you involved. Um, and Jeff said to them, I'm not sure, I don't know what to do when I'm with children. And they said, we've got a great shtick for you. What we're going to do is pretend one of us is asleep so that the children can get involved and they can say, wake up, Jeff. So Jeff became the wiggle and that was his thing. Um, interestingly, I'm going to show you a video in a little while. The person who recorded it was Jeff's nephew. Okay? You're in Adelaide working for the university. Um, but a whole range of people involved and you know, trying to get some shift in these areas. So we're focused on fathers, particularly. Um, but we'll get to number five and I'll show you how. I keep going to look at my screen behind me. 
Um, so a national strategy is trying to support, um, encourage more fatherly involvement in children's lives and support that. Um, to increase investment in tailored um, perinatal education, because men sometimes get left out of the picture there as well. Um, or they feel like they don't quite fit when, it's, when all of that's happening with their children. Um, to aim for 12 weeks of federally funded parental leave for fathers, but critically for parental leave that does not take away from the mother's parental leave. Because often families are forced into a situation where they can only take one or you know, they have to get back to work quickly. So encouraging that time spent with very young children at home as those first educators. Um, we want to get dads involved as much as possible. Um, so, and then a commitment to the National Cabinet to develop implement, and fund universal access. Now that's happening, South Australia is focusing on universal access for three-year-olds into preschool, um, which is great, as long as that education is high quality, and if we have the educators to be able to do that job, which is again that challenge of getting all those educators in. The reason why I was brought into this space was this last um, point, which is to have a national early childhood workforce strategy to encourage more men into early childhood education. Okay? How we do that is a question for the ages. Hopefully it's answerable, I'm not sure. Um, so what we're trying to do is to raise awareness, and maybe speaking here today might do that, spread that awareness that early childhood education is a career. Anyone willing to join? No, that's right. Maybe talk to people who might be willing. Um, but also championing those great male early childhood educators and teachers who are out there doing amazing work. Um, I'll show you one of those in a minute in this video. Um, and building dad's involvement in children's lives so that children who might not have access to a really strong male father figure or male figure in their lives get to see the interaction between male educators, female educators and men that truly care about children's lives. Um, if children don't have that, then education is a space where we hope they get that. Um, and yeah, changing that public perception. This is a long thing to try and do, right? Change that perception of what men can and can't do, what men should and shouldn't do how well men can work alongside their female partners and, and um, educators to do that. Okay, um, as part of that, we created this video. So I'm gonna show you a video now. Now, um, hands up if you're on TikTok. <laughs> Thank you. There's always one. I'm not either, don't worry. I don't even know what it is. Um, but one of the people in this video is apparently a TikTok superstar, okay? TikTok superstar, his name is Mr. Luke. Okay. Ah, oh, see, Kim knows, right? Okay. Um, there's also some bald guy in there who talks, so I'm just going to show you this. Um, it's something we're trying to do to change that perception. Hi, I'm Marty Bain, and I'm a passionate early childhood teacher. So, male educators are really important in young children's lives because some children might not have access to male role models and positive influences. I'm just going to pause it. Does that sound very loud from where I'm at? No, that's all right. That's all right. You know, I'm a teacher, so I can actually deal with this. It's okay, but um, technology never works when you want to, does it? Hi, I'm Marty Bain, and I'm a passionate early childhood teacher. So male educators are really important in young children's lives because some children might not have access to male role models and have positive influences in their life. We know that there's only 3% of the early childhood workforce are male educators, so there's a massive need to have more diversity in the teaching workforce. Men bring amazing things to young children's lives. Um, young children get to see that interaction 
between male educators and female educators and get to see men shown caring roles and being involved in children's lives. And it can be pretty fun when they work with young children. One of the fantastic things that I find about having a diverse team of educators and early childhood teachers is the energy and the different people bring. I think it's very important for children to be able to differentiate different people in their lives that bring different things. And we all have people like that in our lives, so why should it be any different in an early childhood and care setting? I think for me it was really important to employ males as I thought that for me, as someone that I would want the children within my service to look up to. Um, and as a child, we, we do tend to idolise the people that we surround ourselves with and the male educators and teachers that I have at both my sites are fantastic and have built absolutely incredible relationships with the children and the families abroad. Hi, my name is Luke Sabrina and I'm a reception teacher here in South Australia and I absolutely love what I do. It's amazing. I love that every day is different and the fact that I get to make a positive impact on my tiny humans, my little legends, is amazing. But also the fact that I guess I don't know where my positive influence ends. I guess I'm teaching my little people to learn to read and write and spell and all that amazing stuff and I would like to think their skills that they're going to take with them for the rest of their lives. So that's that's a little more than fuzzy. That, that hits me in the heart strings for sure. Having these high quality interactions is at the heart of high quality early childhood development. But men in particular being involved, that's really important for not only young boys, but also young girls to see if the nurturing role can actually be undertaken by a male. That's going to be important not only for their experiences and the relationships they form in their life, but also for a more inclusive society. The ESA is working with the Mindaroo Foundation 5x5 Dad's Action Plan to bring about huge change in young children's lives through father's involvement and through more early childhood educators in the field. Right. So that's one of the things we're doing, right? Trying to get some messages out there. Hopefully connect to not only young people, I think Luke maybe connects to younger men that might be coming through and thinking about education, um, but also old blokes like me saying it's really important too, maybe for those mature age career changes who are thinking maybe they've got their own children and, and they're thinking that maybe they can have an impact on children's lives in a range of ways beyond their parenting and maybe that's a career for them. Um, so these are some things that we're hoping to do, obviously marketing campaigns and increasing that. You might have noticed in that early childhood educators day slide I showed, there was a male educator. So there's little simple things about showing males in those spaces. Um, one thing I'm working on with the Early Childhood Australia Association is a national charter um, for men in early childhood so that a centre can display a sign to say that we welcome men, that we support you know, men and women in children's lives, educating and caring. Um, and that they are hopefully, and you can't really, you know, favour men in, in job applications, but you can certainly encourage men to be part of an application for a job and, and have them as part of that story. In the end, high quality education is more important than gender. Let's just make that clear. Um, so, um, these are some things we can do. Um, look, the big move about changing society's views about what men can and can't do, that's a bigger piece. I can't change that in a day, in a year, in a lifetime, but it's certainly something we can work towards. Um, my main message is that you can't be what you can't see. Um, if we can get more male educators working with young children, then those young boys growing up might see that that might be a career for them, just like Mr Brown did for me. But actually this is something that I can do to give back um, to children and to families. Um, so, I've been talking about this for a number of years and now I've been talking to you for a number of minutes, um, but I want to see some action in this space and I'm hoping that with all the money that's been thrown around that some of that can be directed towards increasing gender diversity in the early childhood field. Thank you for your time. Sorry, the video didn't work very well. I wish when I went through my early childhood uh, training back in what I refer to as a former life that we had someone as engaging as you talking to us. I just wanted to, I guess it's more a comment than anything else, but to add to your, going back to one of your earlier slides, 
talking about the perception that men are high risk in terms of child abuse. Um, I think the, the thing that I certainly found when I was doing my training, and, and these days as well, is that there's a perception that if you're going to work with little children, you must be gay. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like, you know, if you're a male hairdresser, you must be gay. Those perceptions that we need to break down, and they're very slow to happen, but again, having, um, having some positive role models is, is incredibly important for, for all of the kids. Thanks, I, I agree, there certainly is that perception. Um, I am a male early childhood educator. I am a heterosexual male who identifies as a male. <laughs> now, there may be educators who are gay, <laughs> you know, that's perfectly fine. Um, and, you know, Luke's kind of identity is probably, you know, that kind of fluid gender thing that we're seeing in society these days. Um, but yeah, we want all kinds of males involved. Um, and the thing that I often found when I walked into a preschool was, oh great, there's a male here, we need someone at the making table. I'm like, sorry, these hands are not for making them. <laughs> Send me to the social dramatic corner and I'll play with you with blocks. I'll do all those wonderful things. Um, but breaking down some of that idea about, yeah, not all males in this world are gay. Absolutely. Some are. Yeah. Thanks, Jill. <coughs> Thanks very much, Jamie. I guess one of the other reasons that I would see for attracting anybody, whether male or female, into the early childhood space, apart from the reasons you outlined, is the lack of identification of a career progression with it. The fact that when you go in there, the first few years you'll be doing pretty much what you'll be doing in your in your 40s and 50s, if, because there's, where is the career progression in early childhood? And I think that would be a that would be a challenge that the industry would have to get if it's going to attract new entrants. I guess the other thing that um, I, uh, you, you didn't refer to, I thought would be of interest to comment on, is the, is the fact that so many of these centres are privately owned and the businesses, the businesses that are running them, the motivations of the businesses that are running them, uh, how that would actually match with your agendas for what you want to promote, because to me that's also a challenge for sector. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. It is a challenge to try and attract more people in when, yeah, there perhaps is a no progression forward apart from getting out of education essentially. Um, many early childhood educators who work with children on what we might call the floor, down with children doing education, the only way up is direct or we are away from children. Uh, and what we want to do is stop that. We want to encourage um, female progression into the leadership ranks and things like that. Um, but keep men working for children, but yeah, that's a challenge, right? Um, but yeah, I agree. Um, the private sector is a whole other game. Um, they're, they're, they are for-profit children's centres out there, and yeah, look, I think, you know, I've tried to make this argument in a range of ways, in a range of places. My main argument is that it's beneficial for children. Like if, if it's beneficial to have a diverse kind of group of people around you, that's great. To see your identity reflected, the same colour skin, same gender, whatever. Um, but also, there is a financial argument there. Um, that encouraging more men in actually will, you know, broaden out the opportunities for all people um, in society, we hope. Um, but there is a kind of a, um, yeah, a point we need to make money for, right, for these industries, industry not sector. Yeah. One more question. Time. Thank you. If it's a music question, I can't answer it. <laughs> That's all right. I'm the only cockroach here. So. Yeah. Just... Uh, I've had three friends, two of them own very successful businesses, but you know, they weren't seeing their own families and when their wives sort of transitioned their careers, they decided to transition theirs into the as males into this early childhood and they went to the country areas which were even more needed as everyone knows, whether it be normal teachers or early childhood, especially as males, and all three of them lasted one year before they were picked on to the max from the 97% mm -hmm. and they were picked on so bad it was unbelievable. They quit immediately and went back to their old business or took up mining or FIFOs and much better off and unfortunately the whole system missed out. These three guys got amazing daughters and stuff and they're not in the system anymore because they just had a gut for the, all, the, all the politics as well. Had to, now especially coming as a mature, as guys in their early 40s, from businesses where you don't pay PC, you know, wave your flags and stuff around. Just do the stuff, show people love. Too much red tape and rubbish around, and they quit immediately for that. Yep, yep. 
I take that as a comment. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I, I agree, like it's a really challenging space to go into. Look, any, any space that you go into where you are a minority, it's going to be a challenge, it's going to be isolated. Um, and what men like those that we've missed out on need is some powerful kind of leadership as a director or as a principal to come and support those men and to change the kind of the, the environment that they're working in because it can be, um, it can be toxic at times, depending on the leadership. I agree. It's a sad thing that we've missed out on three great educators though, right? 